Well, good afternoon. My name is Dave Herodin from Web Seminar Productions, and I'll be your behind-the-scenes producer for today's Flexo Global Webinar. So thank you very much for being with us today. Our program today is titled Doing More with Less, Flexo Automation for the Flexo Workflow, sponsored by our friends at Kodak, who have been previous sponsors of many webinars with Flexo Global. So we just want to take a moment to thank Kodak. Thank them very much for their ongoing support of all of our programs. Let me tell you a little bit about Flexo Global. Founded in 2007, Flexo Global's growing web portal is populated with industry news, an industry calendar, a print glossary, and links to global flexographic associations. It gathers flexographic information from around the world and makes it available to industry players in just one simple click. All areas of Flexo Global are available to visitors free of charge, and we encourage people to visit and find the information that they're most looking for. Flexo Global operates in real time, and news is posted as soon as it's received, and most importantly, Flexo Global is responsive to its visitors and often includes their suggestions and website upgrades and other programs and contents that are, affect the industry. Let me now go ahead and introduce Laura Hatch, founder and editor of Flexo Global, who will introduce our speakers for today. Laura, go ahead and take it away. Thanks so much, Dave. I'd like to start off by introducing our first presenter, Michael Bialco. He is a key member of the Kodak Worldwide Product Development Team and a product specialist for the industry-leading Unified Workflow Solutions print software portfolio. His particular expertise is in the packaging industry and covers a broad range of flexographic and offset customer support and competitive workflows. Michael is a key workflow representative at global industry trade shows and customer training events and shares his wealth of knowledge in the pre-press and packaging fields. He brings over 25 years of experience and expertise from the pre-press, print, and packaging industry. And as the Product Worldwide Unified Workflow Solutions Product Manager in Packaging, Michael Tedesco provides worldwide product management for the entire UWS current and future packaging portfolio. His leadership ensures Kodak is delivering packaging workflow solutions that are representative of the needs of the market and their customers in position to deliver high value and a return on investment. Michael brings over 20 years of experience and expertise from the pre-press and printing industry, and the last 15 of these years have been spent in Kodak service and support leadership. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mike. Thank you, Laura. Today we're going to be talking to you about flexible automation for Flexo workflow. Some of the items we're going to cover in the agenda are an overview of what Kodak has available in the packaging workflow arena, uh, discussion of rules-based automation, some scenarios that you will find you may find yourself using with rules-based automation, our PLA or packaging layout automation product, and then Mike Bialco will be doing some demos of both RBA and PLA. Let's start by going over Kodak's solutions. Kodak has an integrated solution set that covers the entire packaging chain, saving time, removing cost and improving the quality and consistency of the brand experience for consumers. Uh, we have award-winning workflow solutions that improve quality of print by creating repeatability, streamlining, and automating production processes. We also have portal products that facilitate creative collaboration, digital asset management, online job submission, and efficient review and approval processes. Uh, of course, packaging mock-ups that match final dot-for-dot dot proofs uh, that accu accurately predict the printed package. And we also are a world leader in Flexo and offset computer-to-plate solutions, digital solutions as well as global service and support dedicated to maximizing operational excellence. What you'll see here is that workflow is the heart of the production process. I'm showing you everything that Kodak brings to the table in the way of packaging workflow, starting with a new job creation, all the way through to submission to uh, our portal products, whether it's Insight Prepress Portal for job content approval or Insight Creative Workflow for uh, collaboration and project management on the artwork creation, Insight Asset Library for storing uh, and calling upon those assets readily, and then, of course, web to print solutions, of which we both have our own and partner with, with others. Additionally, we have uh, proofing solutions in Kodak Approval, Kodak Press Proof, Match Print Virtual, 
And then at the core of everything is the Printergy Power Pack workflow. Uh, Power Pack is Printergy with packaging, um, packaging focus. It allows for automation of step and repeat using Pandora or, in, or uh, preps if necessary. Packaging layout automation and then color management via color flow. You can also go out obviously to digital printing. Uh, any digital printing solution, we have several, or any third party, or output to offset via uh, our Trendsetter NX Imager, our plate setters, Thermoflex Imagers, or the Magnus Plate Setter. So why do you need automation in Flexo? Well, the key is obviously that it's measurable. Immediately, your customers can start to track the return on their investment. So you can decrease costs, reduce cycle times, thereby achieving market differentiation, and increasing your profits. So what does a workflow look like today? This is a typical diagram of all of the pieces that you will see in a generic workflow. Everybody has a core RIP, everybody has some kind of database, some set of editing tools, and some kind of automation, whether it's hot folder automation or otherwise. Uh, what does Kodak's workflow look like? In essence, what you see is that Printergy Power Pack replaces the core RIP database and operating environment. Automation is replaced by rules-based automation. Our portal products are Insight Creative Workflow, Insight Prepress Portal, uh, PLA for layout automation and PDF editing, and then color flow for color management. Again, a basic workflow system in this case would be a RIP at the center, this is a, uh, we'll say a trade shop. So a RIP at the center, FileMaker Pro for database, some level of automation. Again, internet prepress, internet portals, third-party software for creating, um, for doing work up front in Illustrator, let's say, and third-party editing tools. Kodak's integration here allows you to basically plug in Printergy Power Pack into an existing workflow, whereby you can retain your your upfront tools, maybe the individual one-up editing software, and just use PowerPack for the, for the core um, automation and power behind your workflow. So the components for workflow automation in this case are, in essence, the items that we can, we can automate within our workflow. So you've got the internet portal automation, color management, layout, trapping, ripping, and your database functions of job retrieval, job archiving, uh, all of your context. All right, great. Well, thanks, Mike. My name is uh, Michael Bialco. I'm a worldwide uh, product evangelist, product specialist for the packaging market for Printergy Power Pack. And what we're talking about here is the architecture or different pieces, uh, different ways to automate the workflow. Um, what we're talking here is using our rules-based automation our packaging layout automation software for creating layouts, and inside our portal, and how we can automate, how we can tie those together, how we can have customers upload files via Insight, which is our inter internet portal into the workflow solution, and they can fill out information sheets from there. And from there, we can start triggering the automation, the job creation, uh, the trapping, the screening. Then it can actually automate the layout creation from that portion so that via checkpoints through the process, some things we call custom fields, information, those can be populated, passed up and back to your MIS system, and then tips could be output to your uh, computer to plate or computer to film device. The heart of all this is our rules-based automation software. Kodak's rules-based automation and Printergy, nothing new for us. We've been doing it since 2004, the early days of Printergy. So when we're talking workflow automation, it's something that has not just come up in the last year or two. We have hundreds, thousands of customers using RBA around the world for automating different pieces of the puzzle, we're going to call it, to automate. What's great about RBA, it's a simple programming interface for Printergy. There's a GUI interface that operators, administrators can uh, administer in the creation of rules, or you can import code, Visual Basic. So really, Virtually anything can be coded with RBA or automated. Really, the sky is almost the limit. 
One thing about our RBA is it's intelligent automation, and it's open. We don't lock it down. We don't tell you how to work. You tell it how to work. That's important because no one really knows your workflow or your facility like you do. And that's what's the power of RBA is that we're open and it's customizable. It's decision-based conditions that are defined by the user. You can select conditions that will be monitored and actions that will be executed within Printergy. Again, talking about some of the other features here. Is, here's an example of different automation points with a job coming in maybe from the Internet. So we see a job coming in, and a decision point comes up. The customer online can fill out new information about the job, press format, what type of press maybe do they know? Maybe they don't. What line screen do they want? Uh, maybe they know yes or no. What kind of ink system is it running on? Decision points that RBA can start looking at and processing the job. From there, what can happen is that the file prep can happen with automation. The layout creation, the stepping can happen. Trapping based on the type of substrate, type of press, type of work it's going to. And at that point, color management happens on how to color manage the job for the right type of printing. From there, we can go to the customer approval cycle. So with the automation, it can be monitoring the Internet porthole when a customer logs in, approves it, and does different criteria for approving, a uh, die size check, maybe the artwork file size check, a copy check to make sure that the integrity of the file is one for one what they submitted, uh, was distortion applied correctly. Different types of automation points that RBA ties in with the Internet Portal Insight make sure that all the criteria matches so the job can be passed to eliminate mistakes. And then from there, we can output a TIFF file. Again, TIFF files to any type of device, Kodak devices or third-party devices. So what I'm showing you here is a Flexo-based workflow from input to output. Again, every shop is different. Everybody does things different. But this is an example of our intelligent automation in RBA that it's just not a daisy chain process. It's not looking at the process to the right of it to see if it's finished or at output. With RBA, it's intelligent automation that it can be doing many different events and actions at once in one particular job. Every job could have a different rule different criteria. And RBA is constantly monitoring every event in action. So what I'm talking here is at the bottom of the screen, an input file is added into the Printergy workflow solution. At this point, it gets pre-flighted, refined, maybe trapped, maybe not. And it can get passed over to the internet now for approval. So again, this could be your 24-hour, 7-day-a-week pre-press facility. The middle of the night, Saturday, Sunday, really doesn't matter, is that customers can be logging in via Insight, uploading files, and our rules for that particular customer start to run. As we go through the rule here, if you'll notice the next section up called One Up Artwork Approved. Again, if the customer approves it online, maybe a CSR approves it, maybe in-house sales, is that the automation then can perform different types of artwork outputs. It could be an inkjet, Kodak approval, for example, or it could be a virtual proof on screen. So there's two types of automation for output that could happen automatically based on the customer type and the approval type. And then at the end of the action there, we can actually e email the proofs to the CSR to the customer. As we move up in this rule, what we're talking about now is uh, surfaces are full. Is the plate surface full? Is the imposition done? Yes or no? Printergy RBA is monitoring this one particular job. Once it's done, we can output uh, an inkjet proof, for example, and we could output a, a layout proof, a VPS. It's a uh, ripped TIFF files on screen uh, with a Kodak wrapper on them that are uh, available to send to customers or anyone internally and open them up, no, no um, licensing needed for software. And they can actually email those, for example, to the press. So on your press, they could open up those ripped VPS files, the same files that could go to plate and they can uh, QC them on the press, or instead of having a color key, for example, or, or color proof, they could be doing it on the monitor. The next events and actions above that is called one-up artwork rejected. So in this example, what we're talking about here is if the customer would have rejected that file on Insight, or maybe internally rejected, uh, we can delete the artwork or block them to eliminate a mistake about putting the wrong file. RBA can do that. It's intelligent automation. It knows what's happening. And our final event in action at the top of the screen is called job status changed. So again, this could be any matching criteria that your facility needs we can automate and match it to. That if the job is ready for final output, 
everyone has gone through their checks and balances, that we can output those final two files. It's all possible with RBA. Again, following the status, final TIF output. Other things that we can do with RBA is that we can work outside the Printergy workflow. So we can work with JDF data coming in from your MIS system, and we can just work with standard XML for auto layout creation. So in this one particular rule set here, what we're saying is that XML could be coming from your MIS system. It gets dropped into just a simple hot folder is all we need, nothing fancy, no no unique connections, proprietary. We can read the XML as I'm reading this rule from top left to right. We can create the layout based on the criteria inside the XML data coming from your MIS system. We create a Printergy job. At that point, when we go down to the bottom section, is we're saying, are we adding new artwork? Maybe it's coming from the internet, or are we picking up an existing job that was done already and just making a new layout? And then as we go on, the, the rules doing splits determining if it's new artwork or existing. It refines them if needed, traps them at the bottom, or it just basically brings the layout into the job. So at that point there, you've saved the entire layout creation time. It's all done from your MIS system via a couple different uh, lines of uh, code in XML that your MIS system could pass to the Printergy Power Pack with RBA. RBA can drive um, output to remote plants also. So this is an example on how we can um, take a job from start to finish. Again, um, we're creating a layout in our PLA software, which I'll go over here shortly. It creates a job, layout, and then what it can do is output TIFFs. And then when it outputs the TIFF files, it can determine based on uh, custom fields in Printergy, uh, information from your MIS system can pass to Printergy, is that it can actually copy or move the files to that remote printing plant. And it can be monitoring this. So if the copy failed, you could get an email. Or if it was successfully copied to the remote plant, you could actually get an email also that everything would be OK. Different types of rules. So again, when we open up a rule in Printergy, in RBA, rules-based automation, and we click on what's called an event or action, which I'll explain, is that at any point in time, if the criteria, the information in this event or action is not exactly what you want. At the bottom of the screen, you can say convert to code. What happens then is that rule opens up in our code editor, and you can actually customize it at this point. So what we've done is we've unlocked the door. It's wide open for yourself to go into and change it. On the right-hand side, right side of the screen, we have the rule properties. So you can actually, if someone knows Visual Basic, they can use this helper here and actually uh, do code coding if they would like to getting more into the advanced automation. But again, it's open automation. It's intelligent automation. And if you know Visual Basic programmers, they have this wide open, and they can really customize your system. Again, one of the other powerful things about RBA, really to help you be as efficient and mistake-free as possible, is that there's a built-in rule debugger, actually. So if you're creating rules, and something's just not working right. We actually have a built-in debugger that helps you fix the problem so that you can do it yourself. You can always call the Kodak Response Center to get help with rules, customization, but we give you additional help for, your, for yourselves called the rule debugger that goes in there, and it follows the events and actions in a rule, and it'll actually tell you where the uh, problem is using the debugger. Very powerful. So as I've been talking about RBA, I was talking about something called PLA, and that's called our Packaging Layout Automation. Furniture Power Pack has had Pandora, which is for the Flexo, offset folding carton, offset paper label market. Pandora was written for the packaging market. It's nothing new. It's been around for many, many years. Very powerful. It works with or without a CF2 file, automated using SmartMark technology, same technology that's in preps also, shares the same technology. It's a simple GUI interface, PLA. And it's definable parameters or instructions for layouts. So what we're doing here with PLA is we took the Pandora engine, we put it inside rules-based automation. And then what we've done with PLA is that you create tickets based on maybe uh, you could say unique type of work or, or different types of criteria for your work. So it could be for different press, different substrates, different customers. And you make these tickets that are very simple to be used by anyone in your facility, starting from a salesperson to a CSR, maybe a job planner, maybe to a layout operator. 
maybe to a Mac operator. Again, PLA is simplifying the creation. Conditions that can be monitored by RBA and actions that will be executed by Prenergy when a condition is met. And this is an example of our Flexo Layout Automation PLA. So again, what we're talking about here is on the left side of the screen is our criteria. Those are all the criteria that Pandora has for creating packaging layouts. And on the right-hand side, we build a ticket based on the type of work. So for example, this ticket was for a Flexo Narrow Web job with custom fields. So as we go through here, what the customer will do, or the operator, is they just add the artworks, they give the job name, maybe smart marks, they can put the distortion compensation, or it can be auto-created, the number around, number across. And then what they can do is at the bottom is they can use what are called custom fields, flexo press, screening, substrate, press ink, or press run knob, the ink type. So the, the operator or the um, person entering the information to this ticket, they can enter this information. Again, this could be pre-populated. All the different fields here can be pre-populated prior to creating this ticket so that we can eliminate mistakes. If it's always the same type of marks going to a certain press, a certain substrate, those could be in there. Uh, distortion compensation, same thing. Uh, different custom fields, which will be used later on in our RBA, all can be done. And what's important now is that there's a validation section at the bottom of this ticket, is that you can set in different types of validation that if something would be entered incorrectly, it would not be passed into Printergy. So it could be uh, different types of um, screening, distortion, marks. Those can be all validation that this PLA will look at to make sure that it passes before it will send a job into the Printergy Power Pack workflow. And this would be a completed ticket. Again, job name, layout name, our artworks. Again, at this point here, our artworks can tie in with our Insight asset library. So you can actually pull the files right from the asset library if they were archived and bring them right into the ticket. Very powerful. Our marks, they could be predefined for this type of layout. Our vertical distortion compensation could be calculated or entered. The round the across. And then what we can do is fill in our different types of custom fields called flexo press, screening, job substrate. By passing this, Printergy's RBA will start looking at these different types of custom fields to ensure that the job can automatically output the TIFF files correctly, and it could actually maybe ship these TIFFs around the world or around the country to a different facility, just with this simple ticket. So as we're talking more about RBA and automation, is that one of the powerful things with Printergy Power Pack is that the interface called the Job Finder, when you log into the Printergy Workshop, Mac or Windows, is that you can customize this for your facility. So if you'll look at this window here, you'll see that at the very top there's name, press ready file, CSR, TIFF, one bit screening maybe, final output, trapped. These are all user controlled. They're unique to your facility. You can customize it however you want. And what's great about this is that your MIS system can be populating these fields for you automatically. So if the MIS system knows uh, if it's a surface print job, uh, distortion, line screens, calibration curves, color setups. It can actually populate those fields for you, and it can um, help RBA determine the uh, automated uh, layout and the output of the TIFF files. It can automate the approval cycle, that if the CSR name is put into there, for example, it could come from the MIS system, that the RBA can read that and then ship the, um, the PDF or send an email to that certain CSR. So what we're talking about here is bringing all the pieces together, using RBA, using different types of maybe custom fields for populating dot shapes, print curves, angles, line screens, and using the rules to tie those together. So, Mike? Thanks, Mike. So what you're looking at here is a calculation based on an average uh, revenue of a shop of $10 million. So in a $10 million a year shop, by implementing Printergy Power Pack workflow with Insight Prepress Portal, what you see across the top are savings, average savings by functional area. So having the ability, <coughs> excuse me, having the ability to, there we go, having the ability to 
have your salespeople submit and approve work via Insight Prepress Portal. Your CSRs also review and approve work via Prepress Portal. Uh, Prepress labor savings by automating your workflow. Proofing costs by enabling virtual proofing and uh, color, color matching. And then, of course, plate spoilage is down due to the reduction of steps in the process. So what you see here is a potential annual savings of $219,000 or $220,000 US, about 2.2% of the overall revenue for that shop. And just a point to note that the cost of ownership of a Printergy, Printergy Power Pack system with Insight Prepress Portal is significantly lower than that. So the idea is that you can return, your, return on your investment within a year. Advance, Mike? Great, thanks, Mike. No problem. So in summary, what, we'll, what we've reviewed briefly for you before we go into the demos is how Kodak improves the quality of our packaging print and increases customer satisfaction via faster turnaround times via automation. Uh, again, a reduction of errors due to a reduction of touches of files. The ability to expand your geographic reach, again, with a, ha with a goal of a happy customer and greater profitability. Again, packaging tools that we have, that we've reviewed with you, are tools that were designed by users. We're typically uh, built around open workflow standards, JDF, JMF, XML, as Mike has pointed out, and that we partner with leading MIS and CAD software vendors worldwide to give you the most options in your workflow. And now Great. it's time for a bit of a demo. Great. Thanks, Mike. So what I've done now is that you're viewing my Printergy Workshop interface. And again here, what you're seeing is all the different types of uh, custom fields here highlighted by my miles. And again, these can be manually entered at any time, or they can be populated from your MIS system. So we're using different little pieces to start looking at setting up checks and balances, quality control points, and then using those for our automation. Really, what's the heart of the automation? It's our rule set manager or called rules-based automation. So what we can do here is when we go into our rules-based automation in Printergy is, first of all, rules are either system or job unique. So you can have global rules that apply to all jobs, or you can have job-based rules. And if I open up one of my Flexo full workflow rules, for example, here, we can see that this was the rule I was talking about earlier. And at any time, you can go and edit this rule by using different events and actions. So the concept behind RBA is that we have events that are within Printergy or maybe outside of Printergy, and here's a long list of them. And then you have actions. So every event requires an action. Again, my event here that I'm highlighting is an input file could be added to the Printergy workflow via the internet. It could be a manual copy, hot folder copy, different ways. And then my action would be to do a preflight of the artwork. But in between there, I can set up what are called flows, different loops, different timers, different branches, filters, selection. So we give you different ways of, uh, based on uh, input file types, proofing a criteria, customer approval that you can branch and filter them. And very easily at any time, I could just drag over an email, for example, if I want, is that if this successfully comes in, I just drag over an email to it. And what I'll do is then, wherever it's read, I'll double click on it, and I'll populate this information. So at this point here, I could just type in the email information that where the email should go to. I could put in a subject. Maybe the file is okay. Maybe it's not. Whatever it should be. And what I can also do, if I click on my dots here, I can start picking up event properties from the job. So maybe I want to pick up the event properties, the one-up artwork position. Or maybe I want to look into the uh, colors of the job. I'm looking for a particular color name. We can start automatically populating the email with that information. So the customer could get an email that says, I submitted this 12-ounce bag of potato chips, and here are the colors in the job and the size. That can all be picked up automatically from the one-up artwork file, and Printergy can pass that to you. So no one would have to enter that information. The customer could get the exact uh, specifications for the job, or maybe the CSR could. But again, this is very simple, just drag-and-drop interface. And as you can see, 
These events and actions are independent or they can be tied together. But the intelligent automation behind RBA is that it has many different events and actions running at once. And it's allowing the user to keep processing the files, adding files, trapping files, color managing them. And RBA is watching every step of that and can be sending out proofs, sending information back to the MIS system at any time. Just one particular rule. Another example we have is maybe our layout automation rule. So what we can do at this point here is that when we create a job via XML data uh, from your MIS system or the PLA software I'll show you shortly here, is that this rule will read in the XML. It creates a layout based on the information. It will create my Prenergy job. I can add those input files wherever they shall come from. Refining, which is pre fighting color management, trapping. I can import the layout. And at that point, what I can do now is extract information coming in from that XML from the MIS. And those are those custom fields I was touching on earlier. And based on those custom fields, it can start populating the job, which is right here. That can automatically be populated coming from your MIS system. And what can happen then is that your output then can match all this information, line screen, calibration curve, press type. It can automate the output of TIFF files, reduce mistakes, so that automatically you would have correct TIFFs based on the input criteria. Just one example of the different types of rules that we have inside Prenergy's RBA. Uh, as we go through some of the other steps here, this could be a uh, MIS rule, for example. So again, very simple, very clean, very easy to work with. Uh, XML comes in from a uh, um, MIS system into a hot folder. We read it, and again, same steps, create a layout, create a job, and at this point we here we have a decision filter. Do we add new artwork or do we pick up an existing job for reruns, maybe a different layout? Very simple, very easy. Not complex to do at all. Um, when, you purchase our, when you purchase the rules-based automation per G Power Pack, it comes with a set of canned rules that we give you. And what you can do from there is that you can customize these or you can write your own rules or you can have Kodak Workflow Expert come on site and help you create rules. There is also custom development work as an option so that if you see something in here that's more unique to your facility, Kodak can work with you and write your own customization in RBA at this point. So we talked about RBA. We know it's running in the background. But let's now talk about PLA, Packaging Layout Automation. I've launched my Packaging Layout Mac application here. It's Windows-based also. And this is the interface. Again, all this can be happening via the MIS system, which I'll show you here after we do this manual demo. And the first thing we have is different jobs that we've ran through our PLA. And when we do this, what we'll do is we'll create a new ticket. Or we'll create a new job based on an existing ticket. And we can pick what one based on the type of uh, the job criteria. Again, these are completely customized to match your needs. So let's say we're doing a, a simple Flexo narrow web job. So what I'll do here is within maybe 10 seconds, I'll populate this information. I'll add my artwork, and we'll send it to Prenergy. Prenergy, using RBA, will automatically create the job, trap the job, send it to Insight for approval, make the layout, and I'll put one bit TIFFs. So let's go from there. So what we're going to do is give it a job name, give it a layout name, say it's 3 by 3 we can go find some artworks at this point. Now we say we're going three around, three across. This particular job uses a certain distortion, or at this point you could just type in whichever one you want, and we're done. Send a printer G. That fast. Under the hood, it validated, made sure all the criteria was matching for the job. It's talking to our RBA in Printer G Power Pack. So if we come in here now, we can see it's waiting, and what it's going to be doing now is writing out that XML file, and it's completed. If we go to the Prenergy Power Pack workflow, it's been created. And again, at any time, we can come into the job, and we can see that the job was created. Our one-up artwork is added, color match, refined, and our layout is done already. Completed with marks, and we're outputting tips. 
That's the power of automation. That's how you can really automate the steps, reducing the layout time, creating jobs automatically. Different types of work styles really work well for this. Maybe you want to use bits and pieces of the automation. You can do that at any time. So if we go back to our another PLA job here, we can make another one. And we can make one with custom fields. So this is, again, what we're talking about here is that any time we can populate the information here, add some artworks. And again, maybe this one here doesn't get standard marks. But what I can do here is I can pick marks if I want to. I can enter distortion compensation. What happened there is I picked a mark that's not applicable to a flexo job, so it gave me a warning or an error. I can say if it's three around or three across. And now I can enter the information about my flexo press. Maybe it's press one. Maybe it's 150 line screen. Maybe it's 250, 200 line screen. Substrate, you know, is it going on film, paper? And what type of ink? Maybe it's a UV base ink. I can send this to the system now. Automatically, we'll do the same thing, and now it'll populate the job with custom fields information here. So making those tickets is very easy. If we click on our Configuration tab, this is an example, and we'll make a new ticket. We can call this our narrow web 18-inch um, uh, repeat. And we start off with a blank ticket, and what we're going to do here is just drag and drop our information. Again, I won't make it too pretty here. We'll just show you the uh, basic necessities that we need. So we're just drag and dropping. PLA can also use dies. So if you have CF2, DD, DDXF, or DXF, or DDS2 files, we can work with those. And you can actually use those in your job and assign artwork to a die file. It's all possible. Auto size press sheet. Again, what we can do is that uh, if you know uh, a role, you can um, use this criteria. If you know the repeat, we can do our step and repeat and just save it, and we'd be done. It's just an example of how to do it. So if I come over and make a new job, I can pick it, and I can just fill out this criteria. Very simple, very powerful. So you can make those um, different pieces match uh, how it should work with your facility at any time. Another example is uh, MIS connectivity. So what I can do here is I can go over to my MIS system, which you can't see, and I can create a job, and I'll hit Send to Printergy. What it's going to do now is it's going to write out um, XML data. could be coming from uh, different sources. It's going to go into the RBA rule that we were talking about. And what will happen here is shortly we'll get a job to pop up, and it'll do the same process that we just did manually here. So there's different ways of handling, again, that automation uh, via the um, PLA client, Mac or Windows, or using your MIS system at any time. So as we look through here, we can see if a job will come in. And it could be this job, for example, right here. And this would have been created via our MIS system. And again, brought in the artwork, refined, trapped, made our layout, made a step and repeat for us automatically, different type of job, and went forward from there. So there's different ways to handle um, the automation, either manually based with tickets and passing it to Printergy, or having your MIS system pass it over. So the demos I had as far as uh, using RBA and using um, PLA. And uh, we're going to turn it over now to the uh, questions and answer portion. Hey, guys. Thanks for a great presentation and a good demo as well. That's really good. If you do have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and chat those in to us, and we'll uh, go ahead and address them here with the guys, with the mics. Uh, several questions have come in that I've gone ahead and thrown up on the slides. But before we get to that, we've got some programs coming up, gang. And uh, next one here is going to be in just a couple of weeks. This week we had the mics doing Do More With Less, Flexo Automation for the Flexo Workflow. But on December 12th, which is a Wednesday, not a Tuesday, but a Wednesday, we're going to have a friend of mine that I've known for many years, Paul Lensell, and then uh, Emma Schlottauer is going to talk about doing more with four. I like that title, doing more with four, talking about expanded gamut printing for Flexo. So be sure to put that on your calendar just by virtue of the fact that you're here. Uh, we're going to be, we've got your email address, and we'll send you reminders about it. But a second good program coming from our good friends at Kodak. 
All right, here's some questions that have come in, guys. What MIS systems are you compatible with? Well, Printergy, uh, we are compatible with many different leading MIS systems. Uh, EFI is an example of one of them that we are. We are also compatible with um, 20 or more so that we're compatible with. So we can, uh, if you would like information on that, you can contact one of us or your local sales uh, person or technical sales specialist, and uh, they can uh, give you an exact list of what's up to date as of today, who we are tested with and compatible with, and what can what information can we pass up and back with? Again, we're using standard yeah, we, JDF JMF. Now, I was just going to say, I think we have, uh, we've heard questions previously um, from Flexo printers who tend to either have their own solution or uh, various solutions that are available, and we try not to, to pitch any one solution. But uh, I know that quite a few uh, of our users use Radius as an example, which is also supported. And as Mike said, if if you have a system that you want, you're not sure if it produces JDF compliant data or if it's supported by us, you can just reach out and contact either Mike or myself and we can uh, get that answered for you. And then of course, if, if indeed your system produces JDF compliant data but it's not supported out of the gate, we can work with you. Is Insight compatible with other files besides Printergy jobs? Yeah, absolutely. Insight is compatible. Uh, and we're, what we're talking about here is publishing files for customers to approve with. So if you have that third-party uh, different type of um, uh, maybe CAD software or third-party um, 3D rendering of the CAD files or the jobs or different types of file types, um, yeah, absolutely, you can uh, publish those so that the customer can uh, uh, view those via the Insight product. So yes, you can use uh, Insight and Printergy and uh, tie in with those third-party uh, solutions. Um, one of our uh, really strong partners is Arden Software, and uh, we actually um, have direct integration with them as far as being able to uh, create the CAD file, uh, assign one-ups uh, inside the step and repeat or the CAD software they have, and pass it to PLA and Printergy, and then different pieces can be published uh, via Insight. Very good. Next question is, do companies that implement RBA typically do it on their own, or do you train their operators on how to create rules and then help them figure out where to start? All right, Dave. Um, so that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, really, it, it's a combination of both. Um, what we'll typically do is that RBA, uh, the operator will go through a couple of days of um, on-site or maybe uh, WebEx training and uh, give them the foundation to go on how to build rules and give them pointers and ideas. And they really then take off on it from there. Uh, if it's a really savvy uh, Pernergy Power Pack uh, operator or a facility that has it and then purchases RBA, they can pick it up themselves and they really don't need much training. There's built-in self-help. Uh, there's a debugger that I was showing you to help troubleshoot your rules. So there's different ways um, for uh, the facility uh, the shop to implement RBA, and at any time you can always call the Kodak Response Center for help with RBA, or you can use our custom development group to uh, customize RBA and really make it your RBA, not uh, uh, what comes from Kodak. Makes sense. All right. Does PLA require a CF2 file to automate layout creation? Okay. Um, no, actually it doesn't. Um, PLA does work with CF2 files, so uh, via any CAD software that can create the industry standard CF2 format, PLA works with it. But if you don't have a CF2 file, as I showed you in the demo, not a problem. We can work without it. We use tools from other vendors. Can we keep our tools and still automate with Kodak solutions? Yes, absolutely. Um, we do have many uh, customers that um, they like to use third-party tools uh, for different pieces of the puzzle, we'll call it. You know, it could be from uh, building files, for example. They could be using different software packages. They could be using different third-party trapping. Um, maybe they want to trap in applications or they want to trap in a different type of system. Um, yeah, absolutely. Those files um, we can deal with, uh, bringing it to the Printergy via, you know, standard PDF, EPS, TIFF. Whatever the format is, we can absolutely work with those and uh, honor most of the settings. Okay. I work in a trade shop. Does automation work for me? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, trade shop, especially um, when we're talking there, we're talking about efficiencies and most importantly, reducing mistakes, right? We don't want to be shipping out plates 
uh, bad out to a printer, for example. So when we look at automation, let's look at all the different checks and balances to make sure that um, the RBA, the rules-based automation, is monitoring every point QC process that the job has been approved by everybody, uh, all the criteria is there, line screens, distortions, trapping, color management p possibilities are there. And automating the insight portion as far as being able to you know, deliver uh, emails or proofs out to customers and then outputting to files, for example, or plates. So there's a lot of automation in a trade shop that we can do. Yeah, for sure. What products do I need to automate my business? That's a broad question, but there it is. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, what products? Well, I can I tell you what Kodak well, – go ahead, Mike, actually. You can take that. No, I was just going to say, I would, if you want to start with what's your minimum entry-level requirement <clears throat> to begin automation, it would begin with Printergy Power Pack. So you need Printergy Power Pack with rules-based automation. Um, you can add PLA if you want to do layout automation. Uh, you can add – Insight Prepress Portal if you wish to automate the submission of jobs and so on. You could add Business Link if you wish to automate the submission of jobs via your MIS system. But all of it begins with a Printergy Power Pack system with rules-based automation. Can you create an automated layout without artwork using a black placeholder? Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is something that we've done quite a lot, uh, quite a bit by uh, many different customers of ours, is that um, they might not have the artwork, but they know what the layout's going to be. So what you can do with PLA is that you could uh, create the job. You could use that blank placeholder instead of maybe a black placeholder. I'll call it the blank placeholder or just basically a, a, a blank file, whatever it could be. The FPO, size. Okay. FPO, exactly, Mike. And it can create the job and do everything. And inside the Printergy Power Pack workflow, if you click on the layout section, you can just um, bring in your new artwork. Maybe it's trapped. Maybe you need to trap it, color management, and Printergy. And at that point, you can just assign it to the layout and remove the blank placeholder, and you're done. Nothing else would be needed. Very simple to do. That does work with a CF2 file. So if you did have a layout using a CF2 file, you could actually uh, use that in combination with the blank placeholder. Oh, good addition. Thank you. What does this offer beyond having Printergy, Evo, and Pandora? All right, I can uh, take that one then. Um, so what we're talking about here is that um, what does this offer beyond Printergy, Evo? So Printergy PowerPack Connect is giving you the rules-based automation engine and talking with your MIS system, talking with XML data that could come in from different sources. Printergy PowerPack Connect also has um, um, more connectivity uh, that Printergy Evo can offer you in terms of the automation piece. So um, PLA is offered only with the Printergy PowerPack Connect. Uh, that's something that it would not work with the Printergy Evo product. Uh, and again, anything you do in PLA, the layouts created, can be opened up in Pandora and edited at any time and saved back into the Printergy workflow solution. The automation, as far as connectivity Printergy to your Insight um, you know, Asset Library creative workflow, something that Printergy Power Pack Connect can offer you more than Printergy Evo can. Printergy Evo is a full packaging capable product, uh, works with Pandora, but when you want to go to the next step and level of automation and efficiency, that's where the Connect Printergy Power Pack can offer you. Great. Last question, gentlemen, then we'll have some comments from closing comments from Laura. Are there a lot of companies out there using PLA today, or is this a new technology from Kodak? No, this is not a new technology. This has been around for um, um, over uh, two years. PLA, it's used worldwide. It's not just in the United States. We have customers in Europe, Asia, uh, the United States, South America. Uh, we have all different regions around the world using PLA in all different types of narrow web and wide web markets. Add that we have them both automating um, via PLA their own shops as well as in kind of a hub-and-spoke models where they're automate, automating output via uh, a hub to several spoke locations. So it's being used both in the, in the kind of standalone mode as well as in the hub and spoke model. Got it. Okay. Thanks, well, Gentlemen, Dave. thank you very much for uh, sponsoring our program today. Let me now turn it over for Laura Hatch, who will uh, take us out of here. Laura, take it away. Thank you so much, everyone. I thought it was a great webinar. Uh, 
make sure that you have on your calendars marked December 12th for the next Kodak sponsored webinar on expanded gamut and Flexo. And also be checking your email for the notification that this webinar has been posted online on Flexo Global. Uh, once that happens, you will be able to access, review, and share with your colleagues and peers in the industry. Thank you so much for attending, and hope to see all of you in two weeks at the next uh, Flexo Global webinar. Thanks. Bye-bye, and have a great afternoon or evening wherever you are.